So now let's look at scene points. Scene point dimmers is designed as a switch replacement. A couple points about it. It looks and acts like a low voltage keypad, as I pointed out earlier. Um, it does come in a wire link and a radio link form, and it is a forward phase dimmer. It comes in a one or two gang uh, option where you have one load per gang on the station. There is an air gap per load. It can be fed by one breaker feed in. Um, it has the 120 volt up to 240 volt, it has a 15 watt minimum, and uh, you do have a maximum of 600 watts per uh, single gang module. On the two gang module, you have a maximum combined of 1,000 watts, so you would have a 600 by 400, which would be okay. In this example here, you've got your line feeds, you've got your 600 watts bulb on one side with a 400 on the other giving you the 1000 watt max or if you need more wattage you can do two single gang loads and you've got 600 on each one of those. There's not a D rating um, because of the having those two right next to each other. Now jumping back to the uh, two load scene point dimmer though, um, down below you see where we've got the setup of this in design center where you would bring in the one scene point dimmer option or you would bring in the one scene point dimmer object and then go to loads and select two and that would make that a two load scene point dimmer which would mean that it'd be less number of stations on your bus it costs you less money so this is a good option to use if you don't need uh, the 1200 uh, watts that you would get out of the two singles um, we also have a no neutral version of the scene point dimmer this is a radio link only um, it only comes in a single gang form. Um, it does have a 50 watt minimum um, on the incandescent loads. And uh, another thing to notice is that there's no relay mode. Notice on the dimming that it only does zero to 93%. And hence the reason why it doesn't handle the relay mode. Um, speaking of relays, let's look at the scene point relays that we have. This is a great way to have switch replacement. It comes with both uh, radio link and wire link and it gives you your toggle on off load control um, once again single line feed in for those uh, stations you have the 120 to 240 volt capabilities with it and you can have up to a 16 amp maximum on that um, we also have a scene point relay that is a dual relay version now this one has two loads on it, hence the dual, um, but they have a five amps maximum each. So this is not necessarily the perfect device for every application. Um, it is great for stack switch replacements, for example, um, or if you've got two loads that just aren't very large that need to be relayed. Um, it also has a hardware lockout switch on the back for line voltage shade application where if that switch is thrown, you cannot apply power on both ends of that, hence the lockout and you don't have to worry about burning up the blind motor. Um, station bus. Vantage station bus is 600 volt rated. The sheathing is rated to handle the 600 volts. So it is allowed to be inside of the electrical box um, with some minimum separations and so forth. Um, so Good thing to know, anytime you do have an inspector that may have questions on that, you can get the cut sheets from text and know that it passes code. Now the accent point, this is our plug-in control device and the accent point two, we have a uh, dimming piece and a relay piece, hence the part number APDIM or APREL. Um, the dimmer um, is for incandescent and magnetic low voltage loads, um, 300 watts maximum per load. It does have two of those on this piece, and the uh, relay piece is has two as well, with giving you the ability to run two pumps or motors or appliances, etc. Um, and you can have up to the uh, up to 15 amps on both of those outlets. So notice if you look back up at the part numbers here, you've got the uh, DIM-GU uh, and the REL-GU. What those is, is that's for a ground up. If I've got a receptacle already installed in a house and the ground is up, I can order in the, the part with a ground up version and so my outlets are still at the bottom. Uh, another great piece about this is the auto on feature.
So let's take a look at what this auto on feature does. When I've got my standard lamp and it's on the Vantage system, uh, a lot of the times you'll find that the homeowner will tend to flip the switch here as opposed to flipping the Vantage system switch. So by testing this, I'm going ahead and run this scenario. So let's say uh, the homeowner presses the away button in a room or turns off the entire house, which then the Vantage system will shut the light off. Um, now, when I throw the switch or I come back in, even though I haven't pressed the button on the wall, this is my auto on feature. They flip the switch once or twice and boom, it brings it right back up. In fact, it will actually do that to whatever the level was that I had it dimmed to. So if I've got a preset level here, see if you can see that from the camera that it's at a lower level, they shut that off and then they bring it back on. Notice that it is back on at that lower level. And so this uh, accent point two is a great piece for lamp control for the homeowner where you're actually able to give them dimming. They can still hit the switch uh, on the lamp um, and still have control over it with the Vantage system, be able to do a house off and things like that. Um, so this is a great piece to utilize. So let's talk about additional stations that we have for load control. So here we have the STP SRW 101 and 201. This is a two gang single load dimmer and it is a forward phase dimmer. The 101 is the 120 VAC dimmer and the 201 would be what you order for the 220 to 277 applications. And if you look at the constant current rating here, you can see that it handles a full 20 amp breaker, derated of course down to the 16 amps. Um, the STP ERW101 is the reverse phase. It's the identical piece of the other. Um, it's just this is for reverse phase or electronic loads. So um, you have the D rating down to 8 amps, um, depending on what the voltage rating is on the input. This uh, power station has two options. You can do the station bus option where it, as it acts as its own uh, load control and this would be wired just as you normally would wire uh, any of our regular dimmers where you've got your breaker feed and the neutral end you've got your uh, load coming in from the fixture and then you have station bus connected up to it and it functions as its own independent load the uh, slave option that we have with this piece is allows you to um, run the wiring the similar way with the breaker feed in and the neutral feeds in to the loads. Um, but then you add an additional piece, which would be a dim control. And then in this diagram, we're doing the control from enclosure. This can also be done from a scene point dimmer where I'm actually controlling the load through a uh, high voltage wire to the dim control. I don't have to have station bus connected up to this dimmer. So where would I use this? Well, for example, if I have a load that is much larger um, and the wiring is already in place back to the enclosure and I don't want to utilize that full breaker on that side, let's say I've got a chandelier that's taken the full 20 amp, I can run the load control off from the breaker or the enclosure itself over to the dim control and put this in in a two gang box next to it and have the dim control run with that and I don't even have to have station bus attached to it. Um, another station is the LVOS 0-10 PWM. This is a uh, four load control device. Now if you look closely at the picture you'll see that there's, there's three different sets of four buttons on this. And this is the reason why you've got a uh, group of four, zero to ten, and then you have a group of four PWM outputs. And then you also have the four line voltage relays that are required for these two different types of analog loads. Um, an additional feature with this is you've got four dry contact inputs um, so that you can use motion detector dry contacts and so forth uh, directly from this piece. Um, it is a station bus and Ethernet bus device, and so in certain applications it might not make sense to be able to get station bus out to an area, but I can get Ethernet there, and so I can control for those loads in that certain area from that. Um, this comes in several different enclosures. The 
open and showed one is the single station um, with the panel cover on the right hand side of that and then we also have the six station and the ten station uh, way to install these where you have the low voltage and the high voltage separated out on these enclosures. We also have the LVOS uh, 0-10-PWM-DIN which is the DIN uh, module that does low voltage dimming control. It has the ability to have eight 0 to 10 uh, outputs. Um, four of those could be used as PWMs. Um, and then you have four dry contact inputs as well on this. Now this is only available as a wire link device. Um, so station bus only. Um, another station to look at would be the RS8 dashed in. This is a relay or high voltage relay device. Um, you can have up to 10 amps per uh, relay. You've got eight total relays. Um, four of them have the set common reset, which you can utilize for lights. Um, and four of them uh, are just specifically for motors and, 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 and those type of loads. Um, if you had the call for even more uh, relay lights, we do sell a piece that is specifically for lights, um, and, and that would be one to look into using. Now, this is available as a wirelink only device as well. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of applications where you can utilize this type of device, basically anything that requires uh, high voltage power and a, a simple toggle switch, such as fireplace blowers, lifts, motorized screens, etc. Um, we also have a low voltage version of that. The LVRS 8 DIN is the low voltage switching. Um, it can handle up to uh, 48 VAC uh, on those switches, uh, up to one amp per relay. Um, and it, Notice that it has eight relays as well, and each one of those has the set, common, reset. Um, many applications, once again, for this. You've got your motorized window treatments, fireplaces, garage doors, etc., where you can, anything that requires a low voltage toggle switch, you're good to go with this piece. Um, nice to know this piece has wire link and radio link capabilities. Um, we also sell a contact input station, the CIS 10 DIN is a 10 input uh, station. Uh, two of those inputs have a unique feature built into them. Uh, input 9, you can have a remote IR sensor attached to it. And input 10, you can have the uh, light sensor attached to it. Um, once again, DIN format and lots of applications with a contact input station. You can have your motion, stress sensors, and so forth. All of these different devices run to the contact input station, and it can be in a central location. Um, and this one is also available in Wirelink and Radio Link. So the last section that we're going to cover is the RFLC devices. Um, we have the DRD4, which is a universal dimmer. This is a forward phase dimmer and designed on the 120 volt uh, platform. You've got a 25 watt to 600 watts uh, capable on this, 25 watt being the minimum. Um, and this is designed for incandescent and quartz halogens. Um, if you are utilizing fluorescence and magnetic electronic low voltage um, type of loads, once again, staying within the forward phase, cold cathodes, um, and the M MKX or equivalent ballast is you need to keep in mind that this has a 25 watt minimum but only a 500 watt maximum um, and you ought to just test uh, different dimmable CFLs if you're utilizing it with this product. Some of them work well and others of them don't. The DRD2 is a forward phase dimmer but this is our new neutral version of the DRD4. So it is designed for incandescent only um, it does have a 60 watt minimum and a 600 watt maximum on this piece. Um, there is some derating that does need to take place with the RFLC loads. Now, if you notice at this graph here, you've got, if I've got two loads, even though they're incandescent loads next to each other in a two gang scenario, I have to derate both loads down to 500 watts each. If I'm going to something as large as a four gang, I would have to derate the two middle ones on the inside to 400 watts, the two outer ones to 500. Um, and then with any of the other type of loads that you could put on this RFLC device, notice that it has a 200 watt drop where the two middle ones in the four gang drop all the way down to 300 watts and then the two outer ones are at 400 watts. 
another piece that we have with the uh, RFLC product is the DRD9, this fan station. It gives you four speed fan control, um, 120 volt uh, capable, and um, it is nice. It's a single fan per switch. Um, and the buttons on this station are fixed, non programmable uh, type of loads. We also have the MRP6W and the MRP7W. These are the plug-in modules. The 6 is the lamp station with a single outlet at the bottom. Notice it's got a 25 watt minimum with a 300 watt maximum on that. The appliance station has an 800 watt maximum. And it has a similar feature to the accent point 2 that we talked about, which the auto on feature, which will ensure that the load receives the power even if the occupant uses the switch to turn it off. So let's take a look at Design Center where we left off last time. Here we are on the left hand side. I've clicked on Enclosure View and as you can see in this main center area where it has the information of what I'm about ready to edit. Down below I've uh, adjusted as we've done earlier to a two module enclosure. Now we'll be working with the uh, single module trainer. If you notice in the drop down I do not have a single in the file. All you need to do is put your uh, modules that you're going to work with uh, when you get your testing trainer uh, for your own use. Um, you put those modules in this first position. So a very quick way to do this, I can right click and click add a module and that's going to bring in my standard dimmer module. Um, also just so you know, I can come into on the right hand side, I can go to a folder here under uh, modules. Uh, and drag and drop or double click on any of these uh, modules which we talked about um, earlier and I can drag and put those into place um, on the panel. So uh, another quick way to add loads is to right click and click populate on that module and notice now it's given me all 12 loads populated. If I jump back out into area view you'll see that all of those loads are now set into the project.